Today's guest has one foot in Minnesota and the other in New York City. She ties her two lives together through her amazing quilts. I'd like to please welcome Victoria Finley Wolf, an extraordinary quilter who uses a double wedding ring quilt pattern as her palette to tell her life stories. Welcome back to Sewing with Nancy, Victoria. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks for having me. Uh, if my grandmother and I were able to make a quilt together, this mm -hmm. quilt, Greatest Possible Trust, is probably what it would look like. Uh, the design is a contemporary double wedding ring and combines modern and traditional quilting. It brings the two worlds together. Double wedding ring quilts, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture, custom built in America. Clover, making a difference in sewing, quilting, crafting, and needle arts for over 30 years. Amazing designs and Class A needles. We're going to start with Victoria's quilt, Remembering Christmas Past, which is filled with images from her childhood. The concave square of the double wedding ring design is a perfect palette to showcase memories using fabric. With this quilt as the backdrop, learn her secret to piecing this traditional design. We're going to get back to the greatest possible trust that dramatic quilt that you saw in the beginning, but this is a great place to showcase how the double wedding ring design is sewn together. And Victoria, you know, people sometimes steer away from this design, but right. it, you can, if you break it down, it's really quite manageable. That's one of the things I'm trying to get people to let go of the fear. Sure. And the curve piecing is really not that it's a a hard thing to do, but it's a patience builder. <laughs> we all need more well, patience. I like that right? terminology. And it's true. Where you have your memory showcased right. in fabric is this middle section yes. called a concave square. Concave square. So this whole quilt, the, the pieces are pretty standard. So that was the concave square. Mm -hmm. This is the solid arc shape that we're using. And the melon. And the melon in the inside and your setting square. And the rest is just duplicating to make this main element of the double wedding ring. Now we have the pieces cut out. You can use templates as Victoria has done on this quilt, mm -hmm. or you can use die cut mach machine to cut the pieces. Right. Use your, our grandmothers probably use templates. What do you we think? Probably use paper templates. <laughs> <laughs> we highly like these, the, the fancier templates that we have now for the precise piecing on these curves makes things much easier to go together. So here you can see some of the elements that are cutting, cut apart and you first sew the squares to one of the arcs. Exactly. It's a nice easy place to start. You get those little straight seams done. And you can chain piece all of the mm -hmm. squares to your arcs in one go, right? Have that together. Then any time that you're doing curves, you wanna find the centers of your shapes. You should always pin your centers first we have them nicely marked there already, so we can just go ahead and pin our center. And then we're going to pin the end. And I find, after having made almost 30 double wedding ring quilts now, that I can get away with just three pins. And the reason I like to do that, and it makes it very obvious when I get all of them pinned, get this little guy on here. Because you're working with mirror images on the curves, if you just pin those three points, mm -hmm. your fabrics will magically line up evenly. And your raw edges mm -hmm. together. And let's share with our viewers this little end because you extend the melon piece this fourth of an inch. Exactly. A little bit of a quarter over the end of the fabric. And here is Victoria stitching this curve and you use a straight stitch. Straight and stitch, quarter inch seam. And when you're finished with that, Da da! It looks like this piece. Exactly. And once you got that down, that's what's happening next because you're going to place the arch with the squares on it to the melon piece. Yes. And one of the things I often get is, how do you remember which way this goes? Mm -hmm. 
I always say floppy toppy. Okay. <laughs> floppy toppy goes on the top, right? Belly on the bottom. They call it the belly piece. So I'm going to just pin that. And on the bottom here, you're going to be lining up this seam with the seam that you've sewn. And I like to pin directly through that seam so things line up exactly where I want them to be. So I'm pinning a quarter inch down exactly where I'm going to sew. And then I'm going to pin through this seam a quarter inch down. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. stacking them up nicely there. Get my pin in flat. Okay. And here we go again. Victoria's stitching this curve after she's pinned the other end. It just takes a little time to, with a shorter stitch length, to great, create that curve. Yes, and to be patient when you're sewing that. Make sure that the fabrics stay in place. Don't rush it. Mm -hmm. And just sew it slowly together. Okay. And so that's been sewn, and then the completed melon unit goes to the center the square. square. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when we put this up on our, on our backdrop, this is a finished circle, mm -hmm. double wedding ring, but to create rows to sew this together, we will sew a concave square to a completed double wedding ring. And then add at the bottom, so you're not going to make circle after circle after circle. The row is going to start at the top. We're going to have the concave square, the circle the concave square and the circle. And the opposite happens on the other side, so your seam is a nice, gentle curve. And that's kind of the little Reader's Digest version of <laughs> working with the double wedding ring stitching. Mm -hmm. Victoria and I opened the show with an image of this great, dramatic, improvisational quilt called Greatest possible trust. Greatest possible trust with, as you mentioned, if your grandmother had, could make a if quilt. If we could have you... made a quilt together, what would that look like? And that was, that was kind of my challenge when I was working with uh, the two different concepts of modern and traditional. Right? Most traditional double wedding ring we can find on here is, mm -hmm. I think, right in this area. I think so, because here you're going to have your setting of a standard melon, right? You got your setting mm -hmm. stones and your arcs and your small melons attached to your concave square to the inside. But I was really looking at how I could change the story of melding the tradition and the modern together mm -hmm. by putting in some negative space, putting in some whites, you know, playing with some made fabric. Um, this was the 70s, so mm -hmm. getting out all my vintage fabrics that I sure. collect and making some made fabric out of those to put it all together. And to share with our viewers, if they missed our first program, that Victoria received a quilt from her grandmother for her graduation present, and here's a close-up of that quilt. Exactly. Patchwork together, mm -hmm. all done by hand. And po with polyester. Polyester, <laughs> so this is not polyester. So this made fabric, this piece fabric, and then cut into a template form was that inspiration. Exactly. And you, if you missed that program, you can go to nancyzeman.com and watch it online or watch it on DVD as well. But now as we go to the next double wedding ring, we can see some additional improvisational accents. Exactly. Trying to, you know, bring all the techniques together. So mm -hmm. my grandmother was also very good at crochet and embroidery, so I wanted that to be an element inside of the quilt as well. So here, where I was doing more of a traditional quilting pattern, I went back and I chain stitched all by the quilting hand, lines. By hand, by, by the hand, way. By hand, not a sewing machine <laughs> or a serger, no. Um, but putting that little detail in where it hits the red to help tell that story, you know, and kind of crossing over the modern straight lines of the modern quilting, and mm -hmm. then going back in also and, and making sure to have hand work involved, having some hand quilting here and there. You know, we can't teach improvisational because what I would improvise with would be different than what you would, but to give right. you ideas, I think that's what this whole program is about. Exactly. So this is yet one more technique that I wanted to be able to add, is, is having some applique. Most of my quilts you'll mm -hmm. find a small touch of applique, and here I did the red on red of the flowers that related to the traditional quilting. But it's very subtle, so you don't necessarily see it right away until you're up close and get to really inspect the quilt. The surprise that comes with further investigation, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And as we go up the quilt, you'll see that introducing more color. The white now is white on white. 
And we can also look at the border because here at, at the binding, at the outer edge, not the border, excuse me, you have the triangles coming outward. But as we move up, this is an interesting, I would hate to bind that. <laughs> but then as it goes around, we, you've, you've left those behind and this is the traditional way of binding a double wedding ring quilt. Exactly, and that's kind of the final thought that I like to do on the quilt is, is to look at the edge of the quilt. So on the, on the red solid modern side, you're gonna find a different edge than you're gonna find at the top white portion, traditional quilt inside of the quilt. Combining that modern and traditional. The surprise that comes in the lower corner to me is that the melon and the one of the arcs is with this made fabric, the patch fabric, and cut out with a template. And then the surprise of just one arc. It's, it's just such an interesting quilt to look at. You just don't see it in one glance. Exactly. There's a lot to investigate in her in this quilt, and which is what I used to like to do on my grandmother's quilts, was to trace mm -hmm. through and find all my favorite patterns and colors in her quilts. So I'm always trying to find that sort of busyness that happened in hers to happen in my quilts. So I hope that this quilt will inspire you to try to in incorporate many techniques in one quilt. If you ask most quilters, what's your go-to fabric, my guess is that polyester double knit will not be the response. Yet polyester knit is what Victoria chose for this quilt. The look is modern, the stretch in the fabric makes piecing curves a breeze, and the durability is second to none. This is an amazing quilt, different design, a little <laughs> stretched out. A little bit. Changed, mm -hmm. and it's kind of fascinating because it has many of uh, polyester double knit tied like 1970s quilts and so explain it. So that's pretty much the way my grandmother's quilts were made. First with polyester and then she would usually just turn the backing to the front for her binding. Nothing, mm -hmm. nothing, not a separate piece of sure. fabric. Mm -hmm. And then tying the, tying the quilts to finish them off. But usually there's two layers of polyester batting inside of them so they're a nice thick quilts to sleep underneath. Um, and on this quilt, I wanted to redesign that pattern a little bit, take a little liberty with the shape, and I widened it out, and then turned the concave square and put it on point to give you a, a whole different look to the quilt. So I like to be able to look at that this is just one melon of this sure, double sure. wedding ring, which is usually only about this big. We're now up to here. And by turning it on point, you're now getting sort of this mm -hmm. TV screen sort of a shape, which really does some interesting different looks to the pattern of the quilt when you're able to just turn the variation a little bit. Now the fabric colors are, are <laughs> fasc challenging, fascinating. <laughs> They're fascinating, not challenging. <laughs> the, using double knit recycled, some of it found I'm sure at, at um, secondhand stores, whatever. It, yes. Just an interesting color combination. You know, to look at your inspiration, mm -hmm. This is a, a nine patch. Yeah, this was one of the other quilts that my grandmother made. Um, we would sit and cut the squares out mm -hmm. for her so she could run them through the sewing machine. Everything's pretty much repurposed. I yes. know this. I know this fabric. <laughs> uh, here's a photo of taken a few years ago. Oh, just a few years ago. Yes, where myself and my grandfather, my brother, and my cousins all had matching shirts made out of them. That fabric. Yes. Yep. And I'm sure you can go through Lovely. here and, and have some fabrics that tell stories. Absolutely. I, can, I know exactly which article of clothing came from which member of my family. And, and what a great jumping off point to tell a story. And uh, I think what we, we want to show in this program, it's not your traditional Sewing with Nancy program. We're showing you exactly how to piece it because right. you're not going to have these fabrics, exactly. but to know what to work with, what you have and how you can kind of stretch the envelope mm -hmm. to use an overworked term. Yeah. So tying, you know, um, in, I grew up with tied quilts. Right. You obviously did the same and there's nothing wrong with tying them. No, absolutely not. And actually when I finished making this quilt, my daughter said this was probably her favorite one because it's so light and airy when, they're, when you don't have all that quilting involved Oh, sure, in sure. <laughs> and it can be done without, you know, it can be many times tied quilts are done in groups and with fa members, members and, exactly. and friends and so forth. So that will make it, it work for you. So we have the big mama. The big, she's a big mama. Yep, she sure is. And, you know, one of the other things, too, was, again, tying the story together. So my grandmother's nine patch, you know, sort of a look. And 
and putting that into the piecing and, and a few of the arcs that go inside of the quilt. So this was pieced as a nine patch and, and then, then cut, cut as, um, which we did a lot in the first program to show. So you, you can recut, make your own fabric, whether you're working with cotton, which is more traditional, right. but polyester, it's okay to use polyester. Absolutely. I was pleasantly surprised with it. <laughs> <laughs> it went together so easy. I was, I was very surprised. So retro, another way of looking at quilting and even with double wedding rings. 150 fabrics make this scrappy quilt extremely lively. The Bright Lights Big City Quilt vicariously tells the story of Victoria's move to New York City and the life built there. It also is a study in pushing a design, combining the New York Beauty quilt element with a double wedding ring design. Mm -hmm. This quilt defines the term improvisational quilt. Color. That's what I <laughs> thought of immediately when I saw this quilt and color in mini fabrics. Absolutely. So 150 fabrics. How do you find all those fabrics? You <laughs> go raid your stash and you pick every single color and fabric that you love. And that's what you did. And, you, <laughs> and what I like showing in the progression that we did today, this is the same pattern that was in the retro mod quilt with the polyester, but the now polyester, yep. it's same cotton. pattern shape, just using cottons this time. And the idea that when I'm making a quilt that every time I'm making, if it's the same pattern or not, that I'm changing one thing within the pattern. So this time was taking the element of the New York beauty, since I live in New York City, right? Add in that little sparkle of mm -hmm. the city lights. And that's a traditional paper piece pattern. Exactly. But now you placed it in one of the arcs of the Big Mama. Yeah, my Big Mama double wedding ring pattern there. Yeah, so adding in that little element, um, just giving it a little extra flavor. It, not a hard thing to do, but yet another great technique to take a few minutes to learn. Looking at this quilt, you can always find something different and new. And when I look at it, I think, oh, I didn't see that fabric before. Well, with 150 fabrics, of course not. But right. we're going to start it in this area to show some of your unique combinations. Right. So I'm still trying to tell my story somehow. Mm -hmm. So obviously, I live in New York City, but I'm the farm girl, right? Got to have <laughs> my little country girl in there. Country bumpkin still, still is present. So finding fabrics that will help tell that story mm -hmm. as well. Um, you know, using some vintage fabrics, mixing them with modern fabrics and traditional fabrics. Um, where I live in the garment center of New York City, <laughs> used to be kind of a seedy little place side of town before it became residential. So we had to give a little sassy flavor going <laughs> on inside there. Um, again, adding some retro fabrics that'll kind of help tell the story. Um, and just my love of all fabrics, you know, vintage fabrics, reproduction fabrics, modern fabrics, bold color. Um, pattern, print, pattern, together. All of that, because it's all fun, right? And we love to buy fabric <laughs> and touch and all that good stuff. And I think the, one of the things that I'd like to stress, or not stress, but encourage you is when you're quilting, when you're sewing, you don't have to stay within just a color palette. And no. Victoria, you, you certainly stretch the boundaries. Right. Well, this in particular, orange is my favorite color. So really? that was a great place to start. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so if I'm going to tell my story of New York City, it's got to have some orange in it. Um, mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I like to encourage people, though, is that when you are doing a scrappy quilt, is to put all the different colors together. Because clearly, there is every single color inside of this quilt. Yes. And they live happily together. They certainly so do. So if you're picking fabrics and colors and things that you love, you will have a quilt that you will love when you're finished with it. Well put. Uh, yeah. When I look through my scrap box, I see a lot of greens and blues and maybe a little touch of yellow. But yet, when you put them together, not not a bad combination. Not a bad combination. Well, exactly. it has been so enjoyable to have you as my guest. Thank you. I've to so share your improvisational quilts to give our viewers the encouragement to Try something new. Yes. Throw some fabrics together and see what you're going to get. <laughs> so double wedding rings. There are certainly ways that you can create them and not always have them be traditional, but add a modern flair. Thanks again, Victoria. Thank you.
Several years ago, I featured the Wisconsin Nicaragua Partners Project. Women from my state donate their time and talent to teach others sewing in their partner Central American country with the goal of providing a skill and income. Please welcome Dixie Thorey, who is one of the volunteers of this Goodwill Project. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks for being here and updating us. Uh, not everyone watched that initial interview, and what we need to explain is what the Wisconsin Nicaragua Project works with with the women in Nicaragua. Well, volunteers go down and they teach the ladies sewing skills. Uh, Linda Pratt had taught them how to make these lovely dolls dresses, mm -hmm. and then we have found them a market here in the States that they will fit the 18-inch doll. We go to craft shows throughout the state of Wisconsin and Minnesota, as well as our online services in order to sell the dresses for the ladies in Nicaragua. Now, I think it's so fascinating is that these dresses are made many times on treadle sewing machines. Yes, correct. They do all of this embroidery work on a treadle sewing machine. They take the fabric and they put it into a hoop and then they take the presser foot off of the treadle sewing machine <laughs> and they actually stitch back and forth on a treadle sewing machine to do all of this work that they do. And these are called Chica Nicha. Chica Nica doll mm -hmm. dresses. Thanks mm -hmm. for pronouncing it correctly. And uh, it's phenomenal what they can, the, the workmanship, the artistry in these dresses. Yes, it is. And to think that they, you know, they don't have a computerized embroidery machine. <laughs> no. They do it all on the treadle sewing machines by they draw a little design on the fabric and then they just go and move it back and forth in the embroidery hoop uh, and do each stitch individually on a treadle sewing machine. True artisans. Yes. And this provides them, as we mentioned, an income. And they've done, I remember from the last time, the lady was able to add on to her home. She was yes. provide for her children. What yes. a wonderful service. Yes, it is wonderful that we can continue Nancy's work. We have volunteers in our Stevens Point office that work with and coordinate with the ladies in Nicaragua. Um, they will tell them what orders we need, like if we need so many First Communion dresses or Irish dresses sure. or whatever we need, and then they communicate that to the ladies in Nicaragua, then they let the lady know, because each particular lady is well known for a specific oh, dress. Sure. So mm -hmm. they communicate that to them they make the dresses and then they send them back to us and how we do a lot of this is is there's always a partners group volunteer group that's going to some area in Nicaragua and so what we do is then we can take the materials down and then they can make the dresses and then they sure. dresses will come back in somebody else's suitcase for us um, then they also communicate to us what supplies they need because they don't have this beautiful white fabric that we sure. have or all of the trims and garnishes mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. have here. So they will relay to the home office in Stevens Point what supplies they need and then they communicate that to me and I'm the professional shopper as well uh, as... Uh, that's a great job. <laughs> yes, as well as attending craft shows to um, you know, display their products. And you also go to Nicaragua. Yes, I've been to Nicaragua twice and I plan to continue to go as long as my health. I don't think I'll make 39 times as Linda did, but <laughs> I do hope to continue every year. Now, what I find fascinating, which to add to the story of this, of the Chica Nica dresses, is that now women are paying it forward. Yes, uh, two of the ladies, Petronilia and Sandra, who make these dresses, are now giving back to their communities because they have started, um, there is a burn center that is operating out of our Managua office, and these ladies are actually making dressings for burn victims. Custom fit. Yes, custom fit. They, they come in and they measure them, and then they take the measurements and they sew the garments, and My then goodness. they come back and measure. This, of course, is all under the supervision of Dr. Leandro and then they can um, help these patients because these patients have you know no funds to be able to purchase them so again the Wisconsin Nicaragua partners and these seamstresses are 
providing a great service to the community. It never fails to amaze me how the art of sewing can be so helpful, can help so many in a variety of countries. Just knowing how to put needle and thread together mm -hmm. is amazing feat. Yes. Well, Dixie, I thank you for sharing the story with me and good luck on your next trip to Nicaragua. And thank you so much for having us, Nancy. You're certainly welcome. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this two-part series with Victoria Finley Wolf. I'm working with the Double Wedding Ring Quilt. It was fun to work with her. If you'd like to rewatch this program, hear this interview again with Dixie, you can go to nancyzeman.com and click on videos and watch any of the Sewing with Nancy programs. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Victoria Findlay Wolf has written the Double Wedding Ring Quilts book that serves as a reference for this two-part series. The book includes Double Wedding Ring Basics plus full-size patterns for 10 quilts. It's $18.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2823. Order item CT11100. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyseaman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding provided by Pellon. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.